thank you. This is a TOC kind of AMA. The TOC is the Technical Oversight Committee, for those of you that don't know. They are the governing body. They are the ones that pick what projects enter the CNCF. They are elected. They are our technical expertise. They drive the community. How did I do so far? Yay. As I said, they are elected. Uh, we have some representation here, but they are busy folks, so we got as many as we could to get on the stage. Uh, this is more of an FYI. The TOC is just one of multiple governing bodies in the CNCF. Uh, we as a foundation try to democratize and give as much power to the community as possible. TOC is one pillar of that. There is also the end user tab. Uh, or technical advisory board, and then there's the governing board. Uh, each of them focus on very specific things, but for this panel, we really only want to talk about the TOC, technical things, the direction of the CNCF, what projects get accepted, etc. Uh, amongst other things, uh, the TOC kind of dictates what tags exist by looking at different domain areas and then trends within Cloud Native. Um, we try to be project-centric and we try to put projects front and center. Uh, we also want projects to be self-governing. Uh, we want them to have minimum viable governance, but we don't want to prescribe what that governance looks like. Um, we're really looking for high-quality, high-velocity projects um, that fit what cloud native is, and then it's the TOC to kind of decide what cloud native means. Uh, you may have heard this before if you've heard the governance spiel, but we try to be no kingmakers. Uh, one size does not fit all. Um, and we also don't want to have any one single stack. We actually believe that competing projects are fine, and it actually promotes growth. Uh, we also try and promote interoperability via interfaces. So, you know, we get real-world use and let that dictate the direction of projects. We also try to promote kind of a complete tool set of cloud-native applications and stacks uh, so that they can scale from kind of small, you know, kind on your laptop all the way to 65,000 nodes. More than anything, uh, our top priority is helping high-quality, high-velocity open-source projects, and they're the main driver of customer adoption and success. Thank you, Chris, for putting update over that slide. But we do have a new landscape. Um, it's just landscape.cncf.io. Uh, for those that don't know, we kind of have a pipeline for projects. Uh, almost all projects start at the sandbox phase. Those are really interesting projects. They might be early in their adoption, early in their maturity process. But once we see that they have started uh, gaining quite a bit of a community and the technology is stabilizing, uh, they can apply to become an incubating project. They'll get a little bit more in the way of benefits, a little bit more in the way of uh, exposure. And then once uh, the project and the TOC have decided that that project has kind of become a cornerstone of a cloud native story, uh, they can apply to become a graduated project. With that, we have uh, a couple questions that were already written, and then once we're through this, we can go through the AMA. Uh, are you all ready? Do you want to do an intro first? Yeah, we should probably do an intro first. <laughs> Let's start with Katie. Left to right. Oh, right. Hello, everyone. My name is Katie Gomanche, and currently I am a senior field engineer at Apple. And I have been part of the TUC for a while now. Um, and I'm also a representative on the tab. Uh, I'm Ricardo. I'm a lead to platform infrastructure teams at CERN, focusing on cloud native and machine learning platforms. Uh, I'm also in the TOC. I, I'm representing end users. So in the TOC, we have seats from different uh, areas. And there's a couple of end user seats. And uh, I'm representing end users. Hi. I'm Karina Angel. I am a chief architect in the field CTO office at Red Hat, and I'm here on the TOC. Hi, everyone. First of all, thank you so much for being here. Let's give you all a round of applause. Thank you, thank you on a Friday. Really appreciate that. So my name is Lin Sang. I work at uh, a small company, Solo.io. I joined the TOC in February this year. Um, I'm also a project maintainer. If you, any of you are project maintainer out there? All right. 
Great job, you guys are supporting CNCF projects. So I'm project maintainer, I'm also on the leadership team of our project. So very excited to be here. I can't top that introduction. Uh, I'm Niketa, I'm a principal engineer at Broadcom where I work on all things Kubernetes. I've uh, contributed to Kubernetes in the past and I'm also on the DOC. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for making time. We know that you're busy. All right. The questions. Uh, I'm just going to throw some of these up and then we'll go to the crowd. Um, but I'm assuming these are what Chris wrote, so we should probably tackle some of them. What do sandbox incubation and graduation levels mean? I kind of touched on it, but I'd love to hear thoughts, contrasting opinions to what I said. Go for it. Um, I usually have a very simple introduction to all of these three levels. Uh, some books are greenfield ideas. This is where we have all of the emerging trends and all of the kind of new tooling coming into the space. Then when these tools grow into adoption and contributions from multiple organizations, they move towards adopt, uh, incubation. And finally, we're gonna have the graduated projects and they are seen as stable and mature. They provide usually industry standard within the area they operate in. So, and obviously they refer, uh, we refer to these projects as the ones who cross the chasm from early majority to early adopters as well. So I think this is kind of a very steady growth when it comes to the feature development of the tool, contribution and adoption. So pretty much the community around it. I can, I can add something for, for end users in addition to all the criteria that the projects have to follow. For end users, the levels are really some sort of assurance that uh, when you take a project, you have to, you know what you're expecting. If you're adopting a project that is sandbox, uh, you might, uh, you better uh, do full due diligence yourself and ensure that either it takes, the features you are relying on um, work well for you, or you, uh, you allocate some, some people internally to actually support the project because the project might not be mature enough to just work out of the box. And as you take other levels, uh, you, you reduce the amount of effort you might have to do in-house because you have a larger community and much better support and maturity. All right. Uh, I know this is gonna be a fun one. Are the current tags the tags that we need in 2024? What changes are needed? I didn't write these. I, I can try to answer, since you guys are all here. Um, I think the biggest challenge we have in our tag, by the way, tag spans, uh, stands for technical advisory group in CNCF, is we need contributors. Um, right now, we have, I believe, seven or eight tags out there. Uh, we are deeply lacking contributors. So, so uh, if you guys are in a particular technology domain that you are trying to grow up your career to, uh, tag is really a good way to get your exposure. And I could tell a story of myself, right? So as a founding maintainer on the Istio project, I had a lot of exposure in the Istio project itself. It's like everybody knows about me. They know my impact to the project but I couldn't grow my impact outside of the project until I started to contribute to the tech network, which is where the Istio as a service mesh project belongs to, right? Networking, infrastructure, so we have a tech network, so I started to step in as a tech network, and I, I, I wasn't a co-chair, but I started kind of doing the role of the co-chair. So I was running the meeting, I was um, provide technical reviews, um, projects moving into sandbox to tech network, and that really helps me as a person to kind of grow my influence outside of my project and start to be able to be recognized by the CNCF community outside of my comfort zone, which is Istio. So when I put myself forward, um, when I started thinking about, you know, what's next? Can I grow up in the technical leadership ladder within CNCF? I had a wonderful human reach out to me and said, hey, I'm going to nominate you to be a TOC member. I'm like, can I, I just done this coach here for like three months. Am I going to be qualified? So at the end, you know, I ran through the election and I was shocked. 
I actually went, so this is why how I reached here. From the journey of project maintainer to tech contributor, tech co-chair, and to a TLC member, you all can make it happen one step at a time. Uh, just to add on to like what are the tags of today and what are the tags of tomorrow, I don't want to give out like, okay, these are the tags and these will be the new tags. But more of more that the discussion is happening on what that should look like. We have a few tags right now which are overloaded with a lot of projects, a lot of domains, a lot of areas. And we and there are some that are kind of related to the other tags out there. So maybe they can be consolidated together. So this discussion is going on right now. And we've kicked that off with the tag chairs recently. So if this is something that you want to get involved in and define what the broader domains or tags of CNCF look like. So this is the time to get involved. I think that's an extraordinarily good question. Um, maybe we can address the elephant in the room. Why don't we have a tag AI? And perhaps why don't we create tags as easily as possible? Um, and I think we definitely had a lot of lessons learned. Most of our tags were created when we had an introduction of projects within our ecosystem, and that was almost 10 years ago. So these tags, runtime and storage and application uh, delivery, all of these were representative of the areas that we needed focus within the technical development. And I think now that's evolving a lot. Even if you look into the inclusion of projects and the type or the nature of the projects that are in kind of a, applying to CNCF, we see a lot of them coming from application to kind of delivery. And that tag is definitely all overloaded. When a few years ago, when we saw this interest in environmental sustainability, we created a tag around that. But I think now we are trying to be, and I think with AI in general, I think this is something that is applied at every single level. You can do it in observability, you can do it in scheduling, you can do it in sustainability. It's like pretty much part of everything. Same with observability in a way. So I think it's uh, for us is identifying those areas and perhaps this is where an evolution should happen within the tags, identifying those new areas that we need to focus on and perhaps create these groups of um, collaboration for people because I think this is what we need. Kind of circling back to Lynn's point, we definitely need more people. It's not just about creating the tag, it's about people's involvement. And in a way, we need to follow where the working groups are happening. We need to follow these kind of trends and where the community is going and for us to create a space and process around them to ensure that they are successful. Um, can I ask the audience a question? Who here is in a tag? Who contributes or, OK. Excellent. So, <laughs> so, so let's ask you. Um, and there's a microphone there. I think it works. It should. Um, should work. Um, how, OK, well we, again, we had a meeting earlier this week that talked about um, changes that could be made within the tags, and um, whether combining, et cetera. Um, even if you weren't in that meeting, um, if anybody would like to volunteer to give their thoughts on what is working right now, what are the gaps that you're seeing, are there technology areas that we're missing? There's the microphone back there. Thank you. Hey, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Satish. Um, so basically, the thing what I see here is uh, I've been contributing to open source from like past eight years. Uh, and uh, I'm a contributor to Istio Ambient Mesh, some of the documentation I wrote for the Ambient Mesh. And then like um, I am a contributor to Backstage. Uh, so basically we wrote a GitLab plugin for Backstage and then a core, uh, one of the core action, we wrote it for GitLab because like Spotify is uh, mostly towards GitHub. So the thing is for the tag, uh, I don't see like it, it's not spread outside properly because like not many people are aware of it. That's the true thing. Um, so yeah, I know that like some are nine channels, uh, but still, it's not um, well communicated or like well spread outside. Um, people know about Kubernetes, AI, blah blah blah, keeps on ads and stuffs. Tag, SIG groups are not like well spread outside in the market. That's what I would say. Like whenever I, I run the community programs and meetups as well, um, so many people doesn't know about these things. Thank you. Um, does anybody else want to get up and share their thoughts? So maybe we 
you have to spread more on LinkedIn or social media. Um, another, oh, let me, oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, hi, um, my name is Richard. I work for End Group, which is one of the end users uh, for CNCF. Um, I, I'm currently not directly working with tax, but we do have several projects. Uh, one of the questions I saw, which I like to hear from the TOC, is um, how do we plan to deal with the new AI initiative? Like, you know, I know there's uh, some CN AI, and um, are we going to be having a like tag for AI or how does? Can you speak up? But we can't hear you. Yeah, sorry, it's been having a little bit of trouble to hear. Yeah, we don't have stage monitors, so it's broadcasting uh, that way. There. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Great, great. Okay. Um, yeah. Apologize for that. Uh, so my name is Richard. I work for Ant Group, uh, which is a master company of Alipay. Uh, we are one of the end users. Um, so we are currently working with several tags, um, and we have several projects with CNCF. And the question I have is, um, uh, in regarding to the new AI initiative, uh, I know that we have seen AI kind of landscape build up, um, but how do we plan to tackle the AI with current tag system? Are we going to be embedding AI into every one of them? Which seems to be a good choice, um, but I just want to hear from the audience. Yeah, that's a question. All right, they asked me to summarize the question, so let me make sure I hear it correctly. I think your question is around AI. Uh, what can we see in the landscape of AI, and what are the activities going on within the AI? Is that right? Or? No, it's more like how the AI initiative is orthogonal to all the, yeah, because we're talking about TAG, right? We're talking about TAG now. So is the AI initiative going to be orthogonal to the TAG efforts? Or is that going to be embedded into the TAG efforts? Like all the, all the TAGs will have some like additional AI discussions like network, network AI, storage, storage AI. How does that work? Yeah, I think the question is if we're going to have a tag AI or how we are structuring it. Yeah, I think, I think th this has come often in the last year. Um, uh, well, there's Rajat's there. There's also people from that do liaison with Tag Runtime, where the AI uh, working group is currently uh, working and has published a, a white paper in this area. There's quite a lot of AI also working on uh, um, the area of environmental sustainability, observability. So this is one of the things we discussed earlier this week, that it's actually a cross-tag uh, activity that spawns um, spawns all the areas and one one uh, one thing we are considering is how to have this kind of more horizontal groups that will have collaboration uh, cross tag i think this is, this is something we have to figure out uh, how to best do we had quite a bit of discussion uh, this monday at the offsite uh, i don't think we have a conclusion yet but i think in the next couple of weeks or a couple of months uh, we'll try to do that. So we, are, we are kind of reshaping the tags already a little bit. There's a, f a few suggestions uh, that have been made. Uh, and one, one of this is, uh, is uh, figuring out better the, um, the horizontal layers. There's other areas that you could um, claim the same, like security, performance, uh, where for security we do have a dedicated tag. So we need to figure out how, how things fit. One thing I was going to say is that if we talk about the areas of the tags, but the tags also have a particular role of hosting projects. Uh, because when a, a project comes to the TOC or to the CNCF, we actually tie, usually we link them to one of the tags. And they help a lot with reviews and following up presentations. Uh, so we, we also have to keep in mind this. And uh, for AI, it's particularly challenging because there's also uh, multiple levels. There are things that are more on other foundations even, like the AI and data uh, foundation. And we need to see where's the fit, what should be in the CNCF, and what should actually be outside. So maybe there are areas that we are currently taking under the TOC and the CNCF that maybe fit better elsewhere. We also have to think about those things. Uh, uh, thanks. That's precisely my question. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm also the uh, outreach chair for Alpha AI and Data, just, just FYI. Yeah. Maybe summarizing this, when it comes to cross-foundation collaboration, this is something we definitely need to 
define a bit better in general. Uh, because we definitely have now, like when we had OpenSSF uh, being, uh, being created, we definitely had a lot of projects that would fit into our portion of the landscape with security and OpenSSF. And I think when it comes with all of this AI and emerging tooling, it's the same situation where it, we don't have necessarily like uh, yet a domain defined just for the AI within our landscape. We have different pockets it can actually fit in. But the question is, can they actually go towards the AI, Data and AI uh, Foundation as well? So I think that kind of cross foundation collaboration is definitely we need to define a bit more and just work together because we definitely have very similar initiatives and it's just joining the efforts. Are we good on tags? All right. I, I have a real easy one. Should projects provide consistent metadata about their security practices? I think just a thumbs up would be enough. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, why? This is a good one, actually. Why are there competing projects in the CNCF, such as like Linkerd or Istio, Containerd Cryo, et cetera? I touched on it, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. I can try to answer as a project maintainer for Istio. I do believe it's very, very healthy for CNCF as a foundation. I always think about CNCF as a home for us to live in, right? As a project, uh, as someone representing the project, I'm kind of like a tenant living in the home. And sometimes health competition really helps uh, the vendor user to choose and also help us to provide the best technology out there for your choose. Think about Tesla as an example, right? Just think about you shopping for a car, right? If the only vendor out there for the car is Tesla, then you wouldn't have a choice, right? So Tesla can charge you uh, whatever, like a million dollars, then, but if you need a car, you still have to buy it, right? The fact that we were able to host vendor neutral projects in CNCF it's like a privilege for us, for, the, for us all to live into that house, right? So that we can provide the best project for you, the most competitive project for you, the most easy way to use it, and most consumable way to use it. And with open source, it's even better, it's free, right? I mean, it's not technical free, because there's a learning curve and everything, but it's somewhat free to you. So that's the best way to think about it, right? It's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that we, CNCF was able to provide a great home for us to compete in as a, as a fair playground. I've talked a lot about interoperability of the cloud native ecosystem. I think this is one of the key factors of why it has been so successful. Yes, we reached the point now when we have a sandbox that is more than 140 projects as well. But at the same time, is creating that space, as Lynn mentioned, is kind of creating that space for projects to grow in general. Um, and I do see this as healthy competition, um, which is definitely helping to the evolution all of the wider cloud native landscape. So it's definitely a, a benefit. It's definitely a feature, not a bug, uh, I would say. Um, but at the same time, looking at our ecosystem, because we allow this interoperability, we have a scale that is quite big. We have 200 projects, and we have to implement processes for all of these projects as well. And most of these processes, like even if we automate the majority of it, it does require a lot of manual handling and evaluation from the TOC as well. So it's definitely grown to a point where we, definitely, we think about sustainability of our processes as well. And this is where archival comes into place. And as the TOC, actually, Lynn and Karina mentioned earlier in the keynote today, we are focusing more on the archival as well. As well. So I think this is going to be a natural organic process where we see projects kind of not having that momentum and contributorship and adoptership and then just being archived. And the projects that actually are adopted because the end users have a lot of power when it comes to where the trend is going and what tool is going to be successful. Because by adoption, we have a feedback loop which is created. And I think end users have a lot of power within this area. So the projects which are going to be adopted and contributed to, these are going to be the one who is going to go to the front, front, forefront and, of course, reach a graduated status or uh, maybe move forward as well. So it's definitely one of those places where embracing multiple solutions for the, pro for the same problem space has taken to a very good point of the entire ecosystem. Do we need to reevaluate that? I'm definitely curious about your opinion. So I, I heard end users, so I would add one thing is that um, 
if you ask projects, they will, be, they will say CNCF is about the projects. But as an end user, I think CNCF is about the end user. And why do we have competing projects? It's because they are actually not all the same. Even in the same area, we might see them as competing. And the best example I have is always storage, which is you might have a storage system that needs high throughput and you don't care so much about reliability. You pick one project. You might have a storage system that needs high reliability, you don't care so much about throughput, you pick another project. And they look the same, but actually they have very different behavior and characteristics. So this is why competition is good, because every, every project kind of differentiates itself in some way. All right. Shall we look to the future? Uh, what projects were recently voted in, and what is the TOC looking at next? This is especially prudent, considering we had a swath of uh, intent to applies throughout every uh, day. It's been a busy week of applications. It's been a busy week. <laughs> we have a lot to get back to. Can we ask a question from the audience? Yeah. Sure. Who has actual questions? We can skip to Q&A. Uh, it's going to be about the next project support or like uh, the future? No, no, no. You can ask any question at this point. We've got 10 minutes. Yeah. We want to Any question. Uh, any okay. way you make it spicy as AMA. much as you can. <laughs> OK, OK. Yeah, so I'm um, presenting at CNCF Toronto next week on the autoscaler and stuff. So yeah, um, Keda is good. Um, I've been like uh, trying to see like what's possible on the Keda side. EBPF is the next thing, uh, big thing I'm looking forward. And then observability is the main. So yeah, like if you can uh, move uh, more focus on those part, then it'd be a big thing. So what's the biggest thing? Like Wasam, I, I was asking the same question to Kelsey uh, two days, three days back, and uh, he gave his feedback. So what do you guys think about Wasam? I mean, Wasm is a growing space right now. Um, so we, we're not looking for projects specific to Wasm to apply or something like that. But uh, there's a ton of work going on in the Wasm working group. So we support that definitely. But uh, I mean, I, I don't have more to say other than that it's just a growing space. And we're looking f forward to more projects in that area. Yeah, I can add my perspective for Wasm. So in Istio, we have integration for Wasm for a long time. But this is a feature we haven't seen a lot of adoption in the project. I think it still remains as alpha. Wasm in general, I think it's great for the browser, right? I've seen a lot of browser adopted. It really improve efficiency, make it extensible. However, um, in the, the domain of the proxy, there's a lot of people sharing concern with me on the performance of Wasm for proxy. And I remember Matt Klein, I don't even know if Matt Klein come to this KubeCon, but he said it publicly on stage. He's deeply concerned about performance with Wasm and uh, uh, particularly Wasm with Envoy. So uh, for any technology, it's alpha, I would say definitely use caution, and uh, it may not be ready for large production yet. Uh, that's my perspective. But we had uh, Wasm Cloud just moving to incubation. So there are, there are projects, clearly, that where maturity is, is already happening. And we see this in the TOC as well. Yeah, the use cases are clearly there. You just have to walk around the conference this week, and you will see. Yeah, great question, though. Next up. As the landscape continues to grow and demand for the TOC to kind of review all of these projects gets bigger and bigger, how do you see the TOC evolving, or um, how do you hope it'll evolve? I didn't catch that last bit. Or how do you hope it'll evolve to kind of meet the demand? Move them along? Is that the, the question? All right. How do you hope it will evolve? How we hope the TOC evolve. You mean the governance of the bodies of the TOC or the technology? How is this evolving? How the TOC itself will evolve to meet the demand. OK. Uh, do you mind if I, I can go tackle for this? this? Please. Yeah. So I think in the last two years, uh, we have focused a lot on being as declarative as possible within our processes. 
because we have done a lot of evaluation for projects, uh, we, there has been a lot of due diligence of projects, and I think whilst we use the same criteria because it was like a bullet point criteria that we wanted for incubation and graduate projects, um, it was still very much subjective towards the, the TOC who's gonna do the due diligence and the community and the project maintainers, so it will vary from one project to the other. So I think bringing consistency to that has helped us a lot. Uh, earlier this year, which was one of the decisions of the offsite that we had, actually at CERN, was to merge the new process for incubation and graduation, which is pretty much, a, it's a long list, but it's a very declarative list of all the things that we're gonna check in regards to the governance of your project, in regards to how you maintain your community, and like, do you actually have a process to scale your community to onboard, to offboard? How do you actually have interoperability when it comes to your features? Are you locked into a cloud? All of this is no longer something that we think, it's like, well, like think we should should have, it's actually something at least that you need to go through. So I think when it comes to processes, there is a lot of declarative processes that we're bringing in within the TUC. Um, anything else we'd like to mention perhaps? Well, we have so many so many domains here. Um, yeah. So um, another way that we can scale this out, <laughs> um, we talked about the DTRs, right, or domain technical reviews. Um, one place that we've asked the tags to step in and Really, you don't have to be part of a tag. You can um, help with the domain technical reviews for Sandbox project and um, interface with one of the tags and the tag chairs and um, for kind of help with that. But really, we're asking community members to get involved in your domain area to help us review these projects and because we're all of us, you know, should be, right, taking care of the entire community. Um, and we're also scaling that, that out to incubation and graduation projects um, to help speed things along. Um, so, yeah, that is the call out to help scale this, is help, yeah, you wanted to think? Yeah, I just want to add on to both the points. So, uh, I think in the current state, we're focusing on making our processes like handle the scale better and also leveraging tags uh, and delegating things. Uh, as we evolve though, I think uh, what I think the future should look like is that we're focusing a lot on processes right now, which may be okay for the time being, but eventually we need to move beyond just processes, right? Like we need to, f I would like the TOC to be able to have the time to focus on actually the technical aspects of what the ecosystem and what are the different CNCF projects, what is the future, what do these projects need from a technical perspective, are we getting there, are the projects talking to each other and so on. The second aspect around delegating things to tags, I think we're just getting started, the tags also don't have a lot of contributors, so we're not able to delegate things I would delegate everything, but once the tags are sustainable as well, I think we'd also love to give more power to the tags. So it's not just like giving more work, but also power at the same time. So I think that's where I see the TOC and the tags evolving going forward. All right, um, last question. Sorry, we're like almost at time. Thank you. Um, we are working on a couple of projects uh, bringing uh, cloud native to networking devices. And we are thinking to move these projects to CNCF, first to sandbox level. Currently, these projects are single contributor projects. So what advice would you have to the project at this stage? You have multiple representatives from TAG computer contributor strategy in the room. Um, they. Uh, I don't know if you want to raise your hands, but Hi, Josh. they're helpful, and Ali's here too, I see you. Uh, but they're very helpful in um, helping projects with exactly what you're, you're asking for, is if you're a single contributor, we will ask you to go talk to con tag contributor strategy to help with that. Gain more contributors first before applying to Sandbox. Good. Absolutely. All right. Um, TOC, like I said, it is elected. If you are a maintainer, please pay attention to elections. We send emails out all the time. Also, we have public meetings all the time. They're on the calendar uh, on the CNCF-like website. Please check that out. 
Otherwise, thank you all for joining. Please don't let this be the end of the conversation. This is how we stay a uh, helpful, one last good thing. community. Sorry, I'll interrupt. Uh, can we take a group picture here? Because I don't think like anybody will get an opportunity here with the, all these members. Sure. Cool. Anybody else? Do it? I like it. With, with the audience as well. I think we're. We're, we're done. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys want to all have a round? Yeah, if we want to do a group picture, a group let's picture. do it quick. But I think they're going to kick us out in a couple yeah. minutes. Thank you so much for your Thank contribution you. to CNCF. Thank you.